For today's watch review, we're talking about the Hamilton Ventura Elvis 80, or model number H24555131. Let's get right into it. Starting off with price, you can find this online with prices ranging from $1,000 to $1,500, depending on where you shop. Just keep in mind that this price is going to be substantially higher than the quartz version of this watch. Let's go ahead and do a quick 360 before we roll into the dimensions. Keep in mind this is a reflection magnet, so I'm going to try and capture the essence of the watch as best I can. Here's the case back. And like I always say, it's always good to see a watch in different angles to see how light plays on it, because a picture can only tell you so much. And there we go. Starting off with the diameter from 9 to 3 o'clock without the crown, that comes in at 42.5 millimeters. With the crown, it goes up to 46 millimeters. For case height, we're looking at 11.7 millimeters. And then a lug to lug on the right side is 47.8 millimeters. And then the lug to lug on the left side is 49 millimeters. Kind of an optical illusion there, because if you look at it from the top, you would think the right side would be a little bit larger than the left side, but that is not the case. And then a band width of 20 millimeters, but that doesn't really matter because this really is a proprietary band and it's not like you're going to be able to put any aftermarket straps on this one. For weight, the Hamilton Ventura comes in at 161 grams or just over five and a half ounces. Keep in mind there will be some fluctuation as I have removed one link for my own wrist. And here's how it sits on my seven and a half inch wrist. And then the infamous wrist roll. Starting off, we've got a stainless steel case and then a sapphire crystal. And then right there you see the crown. It is a push-pull crown. And then underneath that, we've got that date window. And then for the indices, we've got applied indices and loom on all of the cardinal indices. So 12, six, and nine. Not on the three, of course, because that's taken by the date window. And then underneath all of that, We've got a H10 movement, also known as the ETA or ETA 2824 movement, and also the Tissot Powermatic 80. So this does have an 80 hour power reserve. And in my experience, these watches just keep on ticking. And that's great because if you've got a lot of watches in your collection, these things will very rarely ever run out of power. And then all of this is inside a case that provides 50 meters of water resistance. And let's roll right into that loom shot. Like I said, it's on all of the cardinal indices with the exception of three o'clock. And loom for Hamilton watches has always been very frustratingly underwhelming. Specifically because of the price point, you'd think you would have some very outstanding loom. However, in this case, it's there, but it's not the reason why you're getting this watch. For the bezel, I don't even really know if this qualifies as a bezel. I just know that for most people, the bezel is the top ring of the watch that surrounds the crystal. So for all intents and purposes, we will call this triangular portion right here surrounding the crystal the bezel um, of course it's you know it's non-functioning it doesn't rotate but we do have a polished finish and i think it looks quite nice you know it does add to that sleekness and overall aerodynamic feel that is just undeniably in your face throughout the entire case We've got a signed crown here with an absolutely 
beautifully minimalistic 60s style Hamilton logo. And there is some texturing, but it's not really for form or function. I think it's more just for style. It is a smooth, polished finish. And like I said before, the crown is just a push-pull crown. But it is nice that for essentially a style watch, it still provides 50 meters of water resistance. Um, it is a two-position crown, so for the first click, you're changing the date, and then the second, you're changing the time. And it is a hacking movement, so you know that's definitely a plus side for a lot of watch collectors out there. We've got a proprietary bracelet here that is unique to the Ventura Elvis 80. And that could be a negative. However, I think for the most part, people are buying this watch for this specific look. So they're not gonna want to change how it looks. And um, so to that end, I think, you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, we do have a very nicely done brush finish throughout the entire bracelet. And if you know me, you know I love my brush finishes. And then we've got a locking butterfly clasp here. Normally I'm not a fan of these clasps, but for some reason this one, it just works. Um, normally in my experience, whenever I'm flexing my hand like this, the bottom of my palm, and then the end of my big old fat forearm will push together these buttons and deploy or release the bracelet. However, in this case, I don't have that issue. So very well done. Um, I think it's a very comfortable bracelet. And again, there is the Hamilton branding. And as always with Hamilton, done very tastefully, not too in your face, and just enough to give it some character and identity as a Hamilton watch. For the case back, we've got an exhibition or display case back, giving you a clear view of the Hamilton H10 movement and it's a beautiful thing. For those of you who have never experienced a Hamilton exhibition case back, it is just an absolute joy to watch and admire because you've got the beautiful movement with the brushed steel rotor and then the case back itself held to the main case by the screws and all of it together combined gives it a feeling of engineering. Like it was designed to be part of something fast, like a jet plane or I don't know, something from Germany, like a Porsche. And you know, that might not be the right analogy, but hopefully you get what I'm saying. Um, it, it looks purpose built and even with a Ventura that I think is more of a style watch, still makes it look like a tool watch and very well executed. For the finishing, we do have the polished bezel as we discussed before, but then it transitions immediately into that brushed finish and the edges are very well done, um, not too sharp, just smooth enough for absolute comfort on the wrist. And I think you get just enough bling, but still look extremely professional. I feel like this watch really needs no explanation for why someone would buy it. And I think that applies to every single model in the Ventura line, because it's such a funky, weird design, but also so iconic uh, and impactful to everybody that for most people that don't even know watches, they might not even know the name of this company, know about the Ventura. For me, growing up in the 90s, I was introduced to the watch from the Men in Black series. So I wasn't even into watches then, but that watch made a huge impact on me. So when I finally did start getting into watches and I saw the Elvis 80, it was love at first sight. If we remove the nostalgic factors of the watch and we observe it for just what it is as a plain watch, let's talk about all the things that really make it special. Starting off with the crystal, I will say that it is extremely reflective, but that's only very readily apparent when you're trying to film the watch. Um, in a real world scenario, it's not that noticeable. What's really great about it is, number one, it's beautiful, and number two, how it blends in seamlessly to the case and the bezel. So it really does look like the cockpit 
of some kind of spaceship or UFO. Uh, it really does add to the overall sleekness and aerodynamic design. And surprisingly, a triangular case design is actually very ergonomic because as you can see, the base here barely protrudes past the right lug. And because of that, it allows for a lot of wrist flexion and extension without getting in the way of the back of your hand. And yeah, the crown does come out a little bit, but it really doesn't affect anything. I've worn this at the gym, working out and bench pressing and push-ups and no issues, which is a, a really good thing. That's just a testament of how comfortable it is to wear during physical activities. For some things that I'm not a huge fan of, obviously the Hamilton Loom, but that applies to every other Hamilton watch I've dealt with. Hopefully Hamilton watches this review and if you work for Hamilton, I'm telling you, please improve your loom. For the price that your customers are paying, they deserve better loom. And then the other thing is minor, but I still think it should be discussed, is the crown. So it is textured, but it's really just for design. Um, it's not the easiest crown to turn when you're adjusting anything. I will say I do have these mongoloid sausage fingers, so maybe I'm just not as good as handling something as delicate as this crown. Um, if you have more slender fingers, you might not have that issue. But for me, I, I don't know. They, they could have made the texturing a little bit more aggressive or something, but either way, it's just, it's just something you should know. But basically, to sum up my thoughts, I really do think the Ventura Elvis 80 is just a blast. It's super fun. Um, you know, obviously it's for a specific group of people, but for those people, I do think you are getting a quality watch. You've got the Ventura, which is, in my opinion, an icon, and then you've got Elvis, who is also an icon, so you're merging two American icons into one super watch, and I think that's the coolest thing ever. And yeah, it's weird, right? I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a weird watch, but I think it's weird in a good way. Weird that makes it interesting and classy. Not weird as in repulsive, kind of like the uh, car from The Simpsons that Homer made. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a great conversation starter. It's definitely unique and one that will uh, really put you over the edge with your other watch collecting buddies. So that's all I got to say. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I also hope that it helps you with your next watch purchase. Thanks for watching. Make sure to join the Discord server if you haven't already. And uh, also make sure to catch my next review. All right, bye.